Oh, hello there. I was just creating the new video. Ah, no, no, ah. Enjoy this tutorial. Your prayers have been answered. Today, you will finally learn how to read the entity list. That's right, you will be able to read the names, health, and whatever else attributes you want from these different entities. We will both visualize the process and write a simple program that prints out these attributes in the console. This way you can really understand the process. This video is one of many CS2 tutorials and I suggest if you want more of this content you continue and watch those. But also subscribe, like and perhaps write a comment. There's a good chance I respond. You can also get instant source code from the tutorials on the coffee page. But like always, you should respect the rules and follow the terms of service for the game you code hacks on. All tutorials from the Sweds C Sharp channel are performed with multiplayer disabled and you should not use this knowledge and code for ad unfair advantages. All right, so we will start this showcase by going into Steam. Under Counter-Strike 2, we will right-click Properties and in the Properties, we will add in the Launch Options Dash Insecure. We do this because Dash Insecure will disable VAC and we can play in a secure environment without other players so that we don't ruin any other people's experience. Okay, so once we started our practice game and added some bots, made them stop, we can run our final product or whatever source code application. This application will read all of the entities that it can find and list their name and their health points. So my character's name is Swedbot, and if we look at, we should find other names. So Dashan, there is OP Dashan, or Dashan, I don't know, it might be German, Dashan. Uh, Hastings, Hastings, Greymouth, Yuri, okay, Greymouth wasn't here, Colin. No Colin, Yuri, there is Yuri, but Yuri, and all the others, you can see their health points, let's damage one, couple of them, and rerun, you can see here that it rightfully say 72 HP, 73 HP, 73 HP, 66 HP, so that's the showcase of how we read the entity list in Counter Strike 2. Now enjoy this tutorial. Alright, how do we actually read this entity list? Well, it starts with us. That's you and me. We sit at the computer and now we want to find this entity list. The entity list is like a big cabinet of all sorts of objects and so on. The controllers, the pawns, the, you know, the objects in Counter-Strike 2, like the entities and uh, weapons and so on. But we need to be structured when we pick the correct objects out of this entity list. So the objects that we will focus on are the controller and the pawns. There will be a controller for a pawn, which will be the characters in game, you see. Uh, or the ones that have health points, they have a location, they have a weapon and so on. That's the pawns. And we have controllers. So the first entry we will do in this entity list will be to find the controller or a controller. And we do that by firstly entering the entity list. Then we find the current controller. So we go one step further and get the current controller. This can be the first controller. 
But then we get the pawn handle. We get the pawn handle because we want to find the corresponding pawn for that controller. So when we have the pawn handle, we will make a second entry into this entity list. Like before, we entry the entity list. We go one step further. Then we get the corresponding pawn. And now we have two objects. We can get different information about different attributes. For example, we can get the name from the controller object and the health from the pawn object. And we will store both these objects and get information, which we can finally create our own object with this new information. So here we can get, for example, our entity. His name would be Shad, of course. And the health perhaps can be 100 points. So that's how we will enter, or enter this entity list and get the information. Now, remember, this is extremely simplified to get the point across, but I hope that you still can understand. Let's get down to coding now. We will start by creating a new console project in C Sharp with the .NET Framework 8. Ew, let me put a better theme on. Let's pick Jons. That's much better. Then we will go into the project properties and set the build to the architecture of 64. Now when the project is prepared, we can install the Switch 64 NuGet package from the NuGet package manager and we're ready to write some actual code. So we will initialize the Switch 64 memory library by using the SWED64 and then create a new instance of SWED with the process CS2. Now to actually read the entity list we will need to get the base address of the client module. So we use the SWED method get module base and client.tll. We will now write down some offsets. So we will go into the CS dumper by A2X and uh, all credit goes to him. He has done a fantastic job here. Under the generated and offsets.cs, we can find the DW entity list. We will copy that and store it as an integer, not one of these anints. I don't know what they are. Next up will be to get the handle for the player pawn. So we will go back to the generated folder and under the client.dll.cs we will control f search for h player pawn and the next one will still be under the client.dll.cs and we will control f for the i health which would be the player's health the final offset will be the is the player name. So, like before, we will control F inside of the client.dll.cs for player name. Now we're ready to enter the matrix or the entity list I meant. So, we will create an int pointer called the entity list and give it the value of sweat.read pointer with the client and the offset dv entity list. Now that we have read into the entity list, we will create our very first entry or the list entry. We will use the entity list address that we have and the offset 0x10. This is because we don't have an ID yet, so we don't need to perform any bit masks and so on yet. We will loop through 64 potential controllers of entities and so on. So we create a simple for loop. The first thing we will do is to check that our list entry is valid, otherwise just skip the iteration, which would skip the entire loop. Then we will get the current controller. We do that by reading a pointer with the list entry and the offset, which will be i multiplied by 0x78. 
So we get each controller by skipping 1718 hex in between. Now the next step will be to get the pawn handle. So we will read an integer with the current controller and the offset h player pawn. We will also check that the pawn handle is valid. And when we have the pawn handle, our first entry is completed. Now we will move on to the second entry and now it will be a little bit more complicated. So we will create an int pointer called list entry 2 and we will read a pointer, enter the list and with the offset 0x8 multiplied by the parentheses of the pawn handle with the bitwise and operator and 0x7 FFF and shift the bits nine steps to the right. We will add 0x10 to the end. What this operation does is we will apply the bit mask 7 FFF, which means we will restrict our value and then we will shift the bytes nine steps to the right. That's it. Okay, so to explain bit masking, we would have to be able to calculate some values in a binary system. So the way you do it is you sum all of the ones according to 2 to the power of the index of those ones. So for example here, the index 6 would be 2 to the power of 6, and we add 64 plus the next one, which is 16, plus the next one, which is 4, plus the next one, which is 1. So this would equal to 64 plus 16, 70, 80, plus 4, 84 plus 1 equals to 85. Now bit masking would work that we would select how many bits that needs to be set to 0 from left to right. So, for example, we want to set these three bits to this value 0 to disable that. So we cross them over and we have now value 0. That would mean the new value on this binary would be 16 plus 4 plus 1, which would be 21. With a new value with this bit mask, and that's it. 21. So the next address we will declare is the current pawns address. So we will read a pointer with the list entry 2 as the base, and then the offset will be 718 hex multiplied by the pawn handle and the bit mask 1ff. Now that we have both the controller and its pawn, we can read some attributes. So let's read the health by using the current pawn and the iHealth offset. We can also get the name by reading a string with the current controller this time and there is the player name. Let's read the uh, 16 bytes. The final thing will be to print these values to the console, which we do with console.writeline. All right, let's test our code finally. So we will run Counter Strike 2 with dash in secure mode on in the launch options like we saw before in the showcase and once we have launched Counter Strike 2 with Dash and Secure we will add some bots as you choose one this is our practice private thing bots add uh, a lot of them and bots stop to stop them and we can run our final application so just click on the run button and we should see the different entities and their health points and their name here we can see Mayor, Niles, Yuri. Let's see Mayor, Niles, 100 HP, and so on. Harvey, 100 HP. And that's how you do it. So thank you for watching this tutorial. I'll see you guys in the next one.